been asked to be your MC for this rally, which takes place every year on Palm Sunday. And that's because I'm a member of MAPW, I'm the Queensland Coordinator, and MAPW is the Australian organisation of doctors whose particular interest is taking the view that war is bad for our health. <laughs> it's a public health issue apart from anything else. And our, our child, now adolescent, I can, is this year's winner of the Nobel Peace Prize, the international campaign to abolish nuclear weapons. was for yourselves because the reason we won the Nobel Peace Prize is that it was a coming together of exactly this people from not from government not the power possessors but people from NGOs from community organizations and rugged individualists who actually came together standing together with you that nuclear weapons, possessing them, mining the uranium for them, threatening to use them, storing them, using them, losing control of them. All of that is not a good idea, but is very bad for our health. So thank you. And it's in that context that I draw to our attention that by and large, it is war that creates refugees. Refugees are not migrants. They are refugees because they are taking refuge. So as we start by remembering who we are and where we come from, let's welcome Ms. Rosalind McLennan, who is the General Secretary of the Queensland Council of Unions. She's amazing. She's been organising. She's been organising workers for 25 years. 16 years of those as a member of the Independent Education Union. And she has a passion for industrial, political, and, con and community organising that she claims that, uh, coupled with the resilience that she claims that only 28 years of working within the ALP, possibly any <laughs> political party, but certainly the ALP, can build. She's a big fan of the quote attributed to Groucho Marx, which as a doctor I really love. Politics is the art of looking for trouble, finding it everywhere, diagnosing it incorrectly, and applying the wrong remedies. <laughs> Rose McClendon. Thanks very much. And it's wonderful looking at all your beautiful faces. Thank you so much everyone for turning out today for this really important cause. And can I begin by acknowledging that we meet on the lands of the Indigenous people and pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging. I've got to, I've got to start by, by saying really, gatherings like this should no longer be necessary, right? I'm sick and tired. As much as I enjoy being with you beautiful people, I'm sick and tired of needing to come out and demand our government do something as basic as act with a skerrick of human decency towards some of the most marginalised, poor and vulnerable people in our community and the world. Am I right? Yeah. yeah. But like you, but like you, I'll keep fighting, I'll keep fighting until we win because the actions of this federal government are quite frankly nothing short of despicable, are they? And you've seen Peter Dutton calling Af African refugees and their children thugs and inventing tales of Melbourne citizenry terrified to leave their homes, aided and abetted by the Murdoch press. That's what people have been told. But we know it's tr not true. We know that he's called refugees terrorists, illegals, criminals, liars. Not poor, vulnerable people who are seeking nothing more than safety and security and a better life for their families. He's even invented the um, quite incredible public relations con contradiction 
of a faceless refugee somehow both able to be stealing our jobs and a dull bludger at the same time. It's really quite extraordinary. Currently there's more than 400 refugee families that Peter Dutton and the LNP government are quite frankly trying to starve out of our country. They're denying them access to health care, education, jobs and welfare assistance. They're living from bridging visa to bridging visa without enough money to pay rent from one week to the next. Many of these families have children who were born here and yet they're denied not only citizenship but the prospect of being sent back to harm's way um, to a country that their children have never seen. And you would have heard, as I did, about the um, Sri Lankan family who fled civil war in their country and made a new life for themselves in the central Queensland town of Billow. And the father worked in the local meatworks and before that volunteered his time for St Vincent de Paul. His wife Priya also volunteered at the local hospital and they had two little daughters. They have two little daughters, one two and the other just nine months. And one day after their visa expired, um, Australian Border Force gave them 10 minutes to pack up their life before moving them for imminent deportation in Melbourne. And as a regional Queenslander, hearing the um, testimony, I guess quite frankly, of their neighbours talking about what generous, you know, shy but friendly people they were, how they didn't have much but what they had they shared, about how the father Nadish was a um, good uh, workmate working alongside them at the local abattoir. You know, these are really people that we should, we, we want here, right? You know, people that, you know, do hard things to make a better life for their family. You know, they would fit in very well in my neighbourhood where family and community are absolutely central and people work hard to provide, you know, a better life for their children than, than themselves. You know, I can't see anything in that story. I can't see anything in the stories of the refugee families that I've met um, that, that buy into this, um, you know, this whole media lies that we're seeing from Peter Dutton and the federal government right now. I think that the truth is, um, for Peter Dutton and those like him, that nothing really refugees do, families like Nadisha's family, will ever be good enough. Because Peter Dutton cares more about the plight of people based on their skin colour, quite frankly, and that's what we've seen um, you know, with the, the white South African farmers, and compassion is only given to people with white skin, and I just think that's absolutely atrocious. He's a bully of the highest order, and that's why the union movement is here today. A unionist is someone who hates bullying wherever they see it and are committed for, to fight for those um, that don't have the strength, the resources or the ability to fight on their own. And I see a lot of um, union people in the crowd today, but I want to give a special call out to Kevin Bates, the president of the Queensland Teachers Union, who's also the head of Queensland Unions for Refugees. I see a number of, I see the Services Union, I'm going to forget someone now and be in big trouble. I see a cohort of independent education union members and I think that it's just fantastic, right, because being union is about caring um, for everybody and I'm really proud to stand here on behalf of the Queensland Union Movement and say, close the camps, let them stay, bring them here, solidarity.